1941. Similar calculations made from the Cape of Good Hope, South Africa, to Melbourne, Australia, at an average latitude of 35.5 degrees south, have given an approximate figure of over 25,000 miles, which is again equal to or greater than the Earth's supposed greatest circumference at the equator. Calculations from Sydney, Australia, to Wellington, New Zealand, at an average of 37.5 degrees south, have given an approximate circumference of 25,500 miles, greater still. According to the Ball Earth Theory, the circumference of the Earth at 37.5 degrees southern latitude should be only 19,757 statute miles, almost 6,000 miles less than such practical measurements. 42. In the Ball Earth model, Antarctica is an ice continent which covers the bottom of the ball from 78 degrees south latitude to 90, and is therefore not more than 12,000 miles in circumference. Many early explorers, including Captain Cook and James Clark Ross, however, in attempting Antarctic circumnavigation, took three to four years and clocked 50 to 60,000 miles around. The British ship Challenger also made an indirect but complete circumnavigation of Antarctica, traversing 69,000 miles. This is entirely inconsistent with the ball model. 43. If Earth was a ball, there are several flights in the southern hemisphere which would have their quickest, straightest path over the Antarctic continent, such as Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia. Instead of taking the shortest, quickest route in a straight line over Antarctica, all such flights detour all manner of directions away from Antarctica instead, claiming the temperatures too cold for airplane travel. Considering the fact that there are plenty of flights to, from, and over Antarctica, and NASA claims to have technology keeping them in conditions far colder, and far hotter, than any experienced on Earth, such an excuse is clearly just an excuse, and these flights aren't made because they are impossible. 44. If Earth was a ball and Antarctica was too cold to fly over, the only logical way to fly from Sydney to Santiago would be a straight shot over the Pacific, staying in the southern hemisphere the entire way. Refueling could be done in New Zealand or other southern hemisphere destinations along the way if absolutely necessary. In actual fact, however, Santiago to Sydney flights go into the Northern Hemisphere, making stopovers at LAX and other North American airports before continuing back down to the Southern Hemisphere. Such ridiculously wayward detours make no sense on the globe, but make perfect sense and form nearly straight lines when shown on a flat Earth map. 45. On a ball Earth, Johannesburg, South Africa, to Perth, Australia, should be a straight shot over the Indian Ocean, with convenient refueling possibilities on Mauritius or Madagascar. In actual practice, however, most Johannesburg to Perth flights curiously stop over either in Dubai, Hong Kong, or Malaysia, all of which make no sense on the ball, but are completely understandable when mapped on a flat Earth. 46. On a ball Earth, Cape Town, South Africa, to Buenos Aires, Argentina, should be a straight shot over the Atlantic, following the same line of latitude across. But instead, every flight goes to connecting locations in the Northern Hemisphere first, stopping over anywhere from London to Turkey to Dubai. Once again, these make absolutely no sense on the globe, but are completely understandable options when mapped on a flat Earth. 47. On a ball Earth, Johannesburg, South Africa, to Sao Paulo, Brazil, should be a quick, straight shot along the 25th southern latitude. But instead, nearly every flight makes a refueling stop at the 50th degree north latitude in London first. The only reason such a ridiculous stopover works in reality is because the Earth is flat. 48. On a ball Earth, Santiago, Chile, to Johannesburg, South Africa, should be an easy flight all taking place below the Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere. Yet every listed flight makes a curious refueling stop in Senegal near the Tropic of Cancer 
in the North Hemisphere first. When mapped on a flat Earth, the reason why is clear to see, as Senegal is actually directly in a straight line path halfway between the two. 49. If Earth were a spinning ball heated by a sun 93 million miles away, it would be impossible to have simultaneously sweltering summers in Africa, while just a few thousand miles away, bone-chilling frozen Arctic and Antarctic winters, experiencing little to no heat from the sun whatsoever. If the heat from the sun traveled 93 million miles to the Sahara Desert, it is absurd to assert that another 4,000 miles, 0.00004% further to Antarctica, would completely negate such sweltering heat, resulting in such drastic differences. 50. If the Earth were truly a globe, the Arctic and Antarctic polar regions and areas of comparable latitude north and south of the equator should share similar conditions and characteristics such as comparable temperatures, seasonal changes, length of daylight, plant and animal life. In reality, however, the Arctic and Antarctic regions and areas of comparable latitude north and south of the equator differ greatly in many ways, entirely inconsistent with the ball model and entirely consistent with the flat model.